So here to talk about the GitHub. Uh, can I get a raise of hands? Who already has a GitHub account? Okay, maybe mo most. Okay. Uh, has anyone ever made a pull request? One. Okay. Good. This is where you learn. Uh, two. Okay. <laughs> so. What I'm going to talk about is uh, why we use GitHub, um, the features of the benefits of using GitHub, and um, a couple of rules we have, uh, how to submit code and interact with our code base, and um, a, a little bit about how to use Git, because that's all, that's all I think about GitHub is using Git as a source control, or a version control system. And at the end, if I have some time, I'll try to do a, a, a quick demo of doing a uh, editing some code and then coming back and create a pull request. Um, so um, on GitHub, so the main main thing about it is there's um, these major tasks. There's the uh, issues where you can look at existing. So uh, GitHub is where all of our source code is, and you can look at the source code and then say uh, present issues, which is uh, feature requests or um, or issues like bugs that you can uh, post it to the developers and say, uh, I found something funny, you can take a look at this. This is not for normal troubleshooting or, or normal help. We have other sources for that. This is, this is for a, a known bad behavior or a, a new feature request. This is talking directly to the developers. And then we have pull requests, which is all about uh, code that you have written, you could submit it, it to put it into the main code repository, so you can contribute back. With GitHub, you can, it's easy to share your, uh, the, the source code. Uh, if you just have source code on your computer and you want to tell someone, oh, it's this file at this line number, and it's, it's really hard to tell that to someone, with GitHub, that's very easy. So I'll demonstrate that as well. And, GitHub also makes it very easy to test the code. We have automation tool, that's the continuous integration. So, for, for, for viewing the code, you can, uh, you can browse the code and actually view it on the web page and view links. <coughs> You can look at all the, the different branches of the source code. You can look at individual commits within the source. So commits being the small chunks of changes. It's very nice to, you can, you can look at this on your phone, on your mobile. Even as developers, we can. You can look at, um, we can look at this on our phone and, and do pull requests and view issues, all those on, our, on your phone. And, uh, and so uh, to view source, uh, this is the, the main page, uh, github.com slash rgpilot slash rgpilot. And from here, a few, uh, to, we can look at how many commits are currently on the current branch. You can change branches here. Uh, master is our is our main branch. We have a few other branches for uh, different development systems or, or uh, different releases, official releases for different vehicle types. But master is where all of the development is happening. Um, from here, you can browse the, you can, this, if you were to get the code, you could, this is how it looks on your on the folders on your computer. So you can actually browse through all the files and view them all. If you were to click on a, on a file, it will look like on the far page, or over there on the right. The, uh, this page is the, uh, the, what, the GPS driver. And from there, on the left side is the number, line numbers. If you were to click on the line number, you'll notice that at the top, the URL, the link of the page you're on, it'll, it'll say hash and a line number. So if you were to give that to someone, it will actually open up on their page on that exact line of code. 
that works for four different branches, that works for your own code, that works for the, the public code. Anything that's on, on GitHub, you can share like this. One thing to remember is if the code changes, so if the link is from a month ago, or, you know, then line number 100 might not point to the, to the same, same source code anymore, because the code might move a little bit. Another feature of GitHub is the issues. So from, from the issues, this is where we have bugs, features, to-do items. So sometimes it's, it's, a, it's something that, a task that we have. Sometimes the developer will just add something ourselves. So we remember to do it later. We might not get to it until a year from now or something. We have some, just some great, great idea. We want to document it somewhere. So we will add things here. <clears throat> On the, on the website, uh, normally you go up to the code side, go to the code tab, but you get to it by going to the issues tab, and that's where all the issues are. You can then sort to the list. The list is a very long list. It's, uh, it's yeah, almost a thousand issues now. So they're not all bugs or anything. It's a lot of to-do items and things that we don't want to get to, or bugs that we haven't necessarily confirmed yet. Uh, but that's a, that's a big to-do list. And you can sort the list by choosing the labeled area here. And by clicking on that, there are around 15 or, or so different labels that we have that we can sort different issues. That could be if it's, if it's safety critical, or if it's something for the driver, or if it's for a vehicle, so it's only for a certain vehicle, like a copter or a plane. And this way, when you select which, uh, on, the, on the label, you can select it and look at only issues that are for planes, for example. And then you don't worry about it. So if you want to create your own, there is the uh, new issue. Whenever there is a new issue created, uh, all of the developers uh, get an email about this. So we get lots of email from people commenting. You can also uh, click up here and subscribe to get those same, e same emails. So you, you would get the same emails we get of people making new issues or pull requests. Any changes on it, you get an email for that. So, how to interact with GitHub? Uh, most of you said you, you already had a GitHub account, so you were at least a little familiar with the system. So, um, there's forking your repo, which means you make a copy of the repo under your own account, so that way you can interact with it. Uh, it, it uh, not just copy it to your computer, but copying it in the cloud so that they can still interact with each other. And then there's the clone, edit, push, cycle, which is you get the code, edit, push it back to the cloud, so that's the development cycle. And pull requests is the process of when you push it back to the cloud, uh, the, the, the maintainers would look at it and say, looks great, we'll take it as is, or oh, can you change this little thing, or can you change a lot of things, or oops, sometimes it just depends on what you're changing. And we're very happy to work with you to to uh, get your code into our repository. So. And then continuous integration is uh, how we test the code. There's a link here that talk, that you can go to from our wiki that walks you through this process as well. Um, I'm not sure what everyone's skill is with Git, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about Git. Git is the version control for the software, so that's when you when you change the software, how do you know what you changed, and then that gives us the ability to uh, submit back only what you changed, and then also to break those changes up into smaller pieces, so we, we it's easier to follow what you were doing. 
the general rule is any changes that are obviously correct are easy to bring in. The more bigger and more complicated, then it's harder for us to know and it's harder to uh, do and uh, needs more testing. Because these are drones that potentially could <coughs> cause you know, lots of money and damage if, if, if your code gets merged in and then suddenly millions of people have the software on, the, on their drones, then if it, if it breaks a drone, it, it's, uh, no one's happy about that. So we're, we're, we're very careful to make sure the code works uh, high, high quality on the code. So sometimes we're a little picky on the software but it's, it's because it affects so many people. The process within GitHub to do this, to start, is we would fork the code. So forking would make a copy of the repo into your own GitHub account. And there's a relationship between those two so that you can link them together. If you, the other option is, is to clone or just uh, download that just takes it and copies it to your computer. And if you make changes, you don't you don't know what happens. It's just you copy it. Having a fork allows you to know all the changes and, and allows you to interact with RG Pilot. So you want to you want to fork. The cycle fork is uh, so when you fork, you make a copy of the whole repository on your account. And the term upstream is what you refer to the where you got it from, right? So our pilot is upstream, and then your copy is under your account. And then that, and then when you have that copy, then you clone that to your computer and make changes, and you have write access to your repo, so you can just write back into your account. You can you can interact with your GitHub, read write all you want from there. From there, what you do is you have your your fork. You can uh, you do not want to edit the code on the master, master branch. You want to make a new branch, and then you can edit the code from there. And it's organized with just the commits under that branch. So um, when you copy it from or when you fork it from ArduPilot. ArduPilot will make many more commits. And when, when, you, when you fork, yours doesn't change until you change it. So we, if you make changes to master, ArduPilot has different commits on master. So you don't, that's why you don't want to use the same branch. You want to use a different name branch. And that way you can uh, do a pull request so you, you present your branch to ArduPilot and just those changes there. That's why you want to make a special branch. So to change code, Make a branch. Um, a few lines of code down here of how to, or a lot of commands for Git. So you would uh, check out the code, uh, remote, would we, 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 um, we your versus upstream, and how to check it out. All that there. This is all on the wiki as well. Uh, once you have code changes on your uh, on your system, you can push it back up to GitHub. And once it's on GitHub, you can make a pull request. So from from the from from your own account, so this example is from RMK from Randy. And you would uh, this is looking at his his page. So yours would have your account name up there. You would say make new pull request on whatever branch you want. And then you would have two things. You would say a, a small summary. It's like a summary of the email, essentially. And then a description of describing what your changes are. And again, the smaller the pull request, the better. Because when they get real big, then it, they usually have you know, lots of testing. Small ones, you say, oh yes, that, that, that changes this behavior, and that's OK, and it goes in. When contributing, there is a few uh, a few things that we require, and a lot of it is just make the code look like all the rest of the code. When we have hundreds of different people working on the source code, and everyone's doing it their own special way, with with their own style, then the code is very messy. 
it's nice that it all looks the same way. So when the owner sees it, you don't you don't go from style to style to style in the same file. So we have a, a description of how how the source code must look, and there's a link to describe lots of different examples. And this is a, this is just small things like that, um, you know an if space parenthesis you know don't just make the white space look normal. And the general rule is. Just make your source code look like the rest of the source code. When making a pull request, the there's a few different um, in, in many different styles of using Git, there is a, a, usually it's a, a um, well. Sorry. Whenever we have a pull, a pull request that's presented to our Pilot, uh, our system automatically tests the system. Uh, so what it does is it takes that, that software, compiles it against many different vehicle types. It will compile a code for submarine, for copter, for plane, for all, all the different types, which you might be only developing for a copter, but you might not realize your change might break plane. So this system will test all that for you. Also, all of these tools will come with you for free on your own repo. So if you fork your repository, when you push the code back to your, your branch on your GitHub, it will automatically be tested there. You don't, you don't need to bring it to Archipel for the test. But, but it gets tested again when it goes to our deposit. It also runs a simulator where it will take a copter or a plane and run it real fast in a simulator and do long auto missions or simulate joysticks to fly up and fly around and come back. And it, and it confirms that it, it does that. So not just a compile check, not just a compile check on all the vehicles, there's a compile check on the different hardware, so on a Pixlock 1, Pixlock 2, Cube, on Linux, on many different platforms. And then it also will simulate it. So lots of, lots of checking. And this is all automatic. This is before a human even looks at it. Rebase is where you would take your code, and uh, when you make changes, the Archie Pilot master branch has has moved on. So you, you might have branched a month ago or a year ago. And there's hundreds or thousands of commits since then. A rebase will move your branch up as if your commits happened today. We'll put them right on top of the of the history. And just make sure that it doesn't there's no conflicts with any other changes in the code. Um, merge is where your code, where it doesn't uh, rebase like that, it just applies them all in one single commit. And we don't allow that in our Archipelot. We prefer the rebase method. And it's, I'll let, there's an example on the next slide. And squashing is another example that's, uh, that makes many commits into one. Uh, we don't need that, but I wanted to mention it. This is what the continuous integration page looks like. So whenever you make a pull request, at the bottom of the pull request, it will look like this. And it will look like this when it works, uh, or if it does not uh, break anything. Uh, if you have, if it doesn't compile, or if the simulator didn't complete, then it will look different. <laughs> a red X or something. Uh, here's a slide about some Git branches. Uh, this is the, the normal method where you, you branch. So you're, you're at master here, and you branched, and you start running your code. But while you do that, master moves on, and this could be a thousand commits, but it depends on how long you were making this feature. So 
the, the development is going so fast that this moves really, really fast. So this is why you want to make a branch and not just work on master, because then you have your branches as a separate thing, and you can compare your branch to the upstream master. Rebase is down here, where you take your branch, and you would, instead of changes from this time, you would apply this commit to your branch. So it would be as if this branch moved up, then moved up, and it's linear, where it's and if you added them today, today's master, and then just your changes on top of that. That's the method we prefer. And then the other method is the uh, merge, which we don't we don't like that method, but it's uh, it's another common method. But if we see this on a pull request, we'll tell you to change it to the rebase. There's a few ways to contact us. When you are working on the source code, it is very good to be in contact with other developers. Uh, sometimes there are more than one person adding the same feature or fixing the same bug. Or, so it's good to, to know about that. And so the, the developers are the people that usually know that info. So if you are in communication with us, we can say, Oh, if you if you were working on this issue, uh, make sure you know about this other person who's also doing it, and you should work together, or you do something else because it'll be done soon by someone else. So it's very good for communication. That's that's what the community the community is all about. So the ways to reach developers, either the core developers with an Archipelot, or other people that are outside using it. There's Mumble, which is a like a video game chat. Uh, where they use for video games, it's just audio, but many times the developers use that to just, uh, it's like a, a voice chat room where we're just lingering in that room listening to anyone that's talking about some sort of development. Then there's Gitter, GitHub issues. Uh, we have mi weekly meetings on Mumble, and all, all of these can be, the links to all these are all on our wiki, which is the rgpilot.org up here. So if you visit here, this is our main page, and you can get to all the things. For those people who have been registering for GitHub accounts, have you ever noticed any problems uh, when working with the GitHub in China? Is it working okay all the time? Or? No. There will so be a little problem. A little problem, okay. Yeah, yeah. So VPN is yeah, one way? Yeah, you, you, you need a VPN to need okay. to accept. Yeah, so um, basically, if you were working on something, uh, let us know and we can help coordinate that. We, we've seen many times where more than one person is working on the same thing, and then they'll come up with two solutions. And maybe both are good, but they're different. So it, it forces us to say, well, we'll take this one and not yours, and then it makes the other person mad. When it's a perfectly good, good solution, but we can't take both. So it's, it's good to coordinate. Oh, and here are the links. So Facebook and YouTube, we know, that are not working in China. But, Maybe you can uh, use it. Yeah, 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 VPN you can use, but anyway, you know, Facebook and YouTube is not that <laughs> important thing. It's That's mostly on... Uh, on discuss.arupilot.org, which is available in here. Uh, then Gitter, uh, at least through the VPNs. Arupilot.org is fully open, open in here, so all the discussion areas are open, easily matched. This is 
by the way, now without the VPA. Wow. <laughs> so, so there are lots of commits. I, I'll give you an example of commit messages. I, I skipped this on the presentation, but one of our one of the ways we organize our commits is we uh, the title can say the which folder it came from. So if you have if you're changing many files, um, break up the commits into smaller chunks of just which folder it comes from. Uh, what happens is sometimes we can make the release notes to uh, for different releases of software. It's easy to go through the commits and see what parts get changed, and then we can see if that applies to a copter or still playing. So it's easier for us to organize it. Even though it seems kind of funny, you make a you change the GPS, for example, and you just, it, it changes only the copter. Uh, it's good to break it up to say copter changes a separate commit, and then GPS has a separate commit. Example for issues, let's say we can uh, change by author. So, so here's me. My my username is Magicrib, which is type of eraser. <laughs> but uh, so I have uh, plane. It'd be nice to have uh, uh, air brakes using dual motor. Yeah, you know, all these different kind of features, um, uh, adding to more crash detection, making it easier to add more control modes. Anyway, goes on and on. I have. This is like a to-do list I make. Sometimes they get assigned to me, sometimes I created them. Like a... And then you could go to labels and say only the ones that are, well, I just type in blank. Blank. And then the list gets shorter. And you'll notice that there's the tabs, or the, or the uh, label, are right there. So as you look through, oh, also there's this open versus closed. Closed meaning we they're, um, done already. either done or we decide it doesn't need to be done or got, got rid of them somehow. Yeah. Okay, and then pull request. Here's, <coughs> I want to show you one example of the, the testing. So here is add bunch, here. Add copter add judgment data to message. I've, I've never seen this. This is all live. Opened six hours ago. So uh, this person made this uh, change. We can look at the files that changed. This is one commit and one change. So it's sent. To, so it's just a string that changes. So it's very very minor. But just because it was just a string that changed, um, there's some they they added some sort of picture screenshot to it to help explain what the change is. And then down here. Show all checks. Uh, there's this big test that happens, and what's nice is, even though it was just a string that changes, that has the power to break things, even if it's just a string. So it just depends what the change is. But uh, so we have multiple runs here. So we have multiple different. Uh, it runs make with different build types, and then it runs each of those in all the vehicles. So it'll run for a submarine, for a plane, for a copter, and a rover, and antenna tracker. It'll compile every one for all these vehicles. And if you, and then the last one is SIDL, software in the loop. So we'll get a demonstration demo of that later today. But if we click on one of these, you get all the details of the whole compile. So on the cloud, the cloud checked out all the code, viewed it all right there, and I'll just go to draw. Oops. Oh. Oh. There it is. Yeah. There it is. So this is the whole the whole compile. They're just checking out code and yeah. It compiles everything and you'll see exactly when it fails, they'll say, oh, error on some line or whatever, but it cycles through all the code for all the vehicles, so you can see the whole process there. So it's all, it's all open. Uh, yeah. And this is all fully automatic. 
that's why we can uh, use the trust that because we are testing everything, every firmware release, every patches against several different kinds of scenarios. Yeah, so this is just a string change, and all that work happens magically on the cloud. You just do a maker code change, boop, and then it runs the simulator. And the simulator is actually faster than real time. So it runs through, I don't know, something like 24 hours of simulation in a half an hour or so. It, it runs through all the different vehicle types. It runs and flies around. It takes an airplane and flies upside down and does a few rolls and loops and all that, where on your test, you probably didn't fly your aircraft upside down for a while. So maybe it breaks it. We don't know. So it, it does all these funny tests. and. We're always thinking of new tests to add to it. And sometimes we'll make new code, change code, or, or add new code that, that, that doesn't, isn't part of the test. So we can just add it to the test, and just, the test just grows longer and longer and longer. And it, it, the length almost doesn't matter, because it's, it's, it runs real fast. So adding one more test is not much more work. OK, so. If I was to, uh, I already have a fork, so I can't really show you what clicking a uh, fork does, but I already, I've already checked out the code onto my computer. It takes a while to do, so I can't do it now. But I have it, and I have a program called Source Tree that I have right here. And this lets me view uh, all the commits and all, all my branches and look at all the remote versus local branches. And, so here is master, and what I'll do is I will make a new one called, like a new branch, called uh, git test. And uh, so source tree is a uh, Windows or Mac tool that just visualizes how to use git. So it, it's running the command in the background, like it runs git, this big and long command, but it just turns into git fetch or whatever command. And you can see them all on here. So I, this is a tool I use. I, I, I like it. But so that is a command you check out a new tool or a new a new branch it's called git test. And then what I'll do is to make things easier, I will edit this in Notepad. There is a um, this is the main folder for Archer Pilot. And if you go to Tools, and then do Git Test, this is a file that any of you can do for a, a, a practice to try doing pull requests. This is also on our wiki that it'll walk you through this process. But so the idea is everyone here can commit code today into Archer Pilot. You can take this file, and you can go to the bottom and add your name. Yes. So I. I went to the bottom and I added my name to the bottom. I, I looked and for some reason I, I wasn't on this list, so. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a practice thing, so I figured today would be a good time to add it. So I just typed in my name, and then I'll go back to this tool, and I will uh, go to this. Save. You can save. What? Save oh, it's, oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> there was, I didn't click on this yet. Oh, and it saved you. No oh, I'm sorry. And go here and hit save. Yes. Okay. And then, yes, so now it's uncommitted changes. So I will do this quickly. Um, this process here depends on which tool you have. If you have a command line or a source tree or anything else. But uh, just committing code. Can you make it smaller? Yeah, it's smaller. It's hard with one hand. <laughs> Look at this.
And then on the right here shows um, the files and the changes you did. So I'll save those, and then I can commit them. So this is all just happening on my computer right now. That's why I have a, uh, from master I moved up to this git branch, and then I can push this push this to my own repository. So push oops, push to my repo. Hope this works. Wait for it. This is Archipel, Archipel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, Fire Desk. From here, I'm going to, oh, see? Now GitHub, I didn't click anything. GitHub just realized that I pushed something to my own branch on my own account, and so it linked it. So from the Archipel page, it says, oh, you just pushed something. Maybe you want to add it to this. So, compare. So it suggests us here. Um, normally, you, you would click over here. You crop. You go to your fork and then choose your account name and choose the, the branch name and all that. been sent out, but in the background all the all the tests start happening. So this is when it shows yellow, it's still running. So anyone if anyone else was on was uh, on the internet looking at GitHub, they would show this one up there. And as a as a maintainer, I have the ability to to, to, to merge it, but normally you would you wouldn't have that option. But someone like me would look at the changes and say Plug it, merge, get that in the, get that in the upstream. So. so, that is it.